The Dark Brotherhood is an ancient organization. We have survived for millennia. Sometimes, to ensure that survival, drastic measures are required. Arriving back at the Dark Brotherhood Sanctuary post dealing with the Imperial lapdog at Dharma's Philida, our Argonian contract giver, Ochiva, approaches us hastily, saying, Ah, assassin, I must speak with you. It is quite urgent. A sealed letter just arrived from a Dark Brotherhood courier. I recognize this type of parcel. It contains sealed orders. It's addressed to you from Lucien Lachance. You must open these sealed orders immediately and follow their instructions to the letter. It would seem the Black Hand itself has a task for you. Turning to Ochiva pre-opening the letter, she urges, Assassin, why are you still here? Have you not opened your sealed orders? Go now. The Black Hand obviously has need of your abilities. Briefly glimpsing the letter's contents, a quest updates surmising. I've read the sealed orders from Lucien Lachance. I'm to meet him at Fort Farragut, which is in the wilderness northeast of the Dark Brotherhood Sanctuary. Apparently, he has a special assignment for me. As we move to leave, Ochiva stops us to share a disturbing rumor. I, I've heard some talk. This past year, some family members have been found murdered. Could there be an assassin among assassins? Go now, dear family member, and may the Night Mother wrap you in her cold, loving embrace. Wasting no time, we hastily leave the safety of the sanctuary under the guise of night, heading toward the nearby Fort Farragut, pausing a moment to further peruse the contents of the letter, which reads, Eliminator. You have served the Dark Brotherhood well in the short time you have been with us. Indeed, the rate of your advancement has been rather remarkable. Now, the Black Hand itself is in need of your abilities. You must proceed with all haste to my private refuge in the ruins of Fort Farragut, located in the forest northeast of the Jaden Hall Sanctuary. When you arrive, we will discuss the nature of your special assignment. I cannot stress to you enough the importance of your swift arrival at Fort Farragut. There are unseen powers working to unravel the very fabric of the Dark Brotherhood. The Black Hand is counting on you to prevent this disaster. Do not share the contents of this message with anyone at the Shadenhall Sanctuary, including Ochiva, and make no mention of your journey to Fort Farragut. Also, be warned. My refuge within Fort Farragut is guarded by denizens who will attack any interloper on sight. Get through these rotting sentinels and you will surely have earned the right to visit my private sanctum. Lucian the Chance. We soon arrive at the ruined fort and the only discernible entrance being the eastern double doors. Descending the stairs, we locate nearby a lever which opens Lachance's sanctum and pause momentarily, spying a glimmer of movement from the walkway above. Notching an arrow, we take care of the promised rotting sentinel and find as our eyes adjust to the gloom, his comrades are loitering in the darkness just ahead. Approaching the body of the skeleton, we see they are indeed dark guardians, such as the one lurking tirelessly in the Brotherhood Sanctuary. However, in the Southern Hall, we also stumble into the first of presumably many traps laid by Lachance through his musty lair. <coughs> Further plumbing Farragut's depths and felling a handful of dark sentries, we finally emerge at a grated gate with a switch, almost identical to the entrance in reverse. Activating the gate and heading inside, we see Lachance awaiting our arrival in his quaint yet unmistakable Dark Brotherhood seat of power. Approaching the speaker, he informs. I have been waiting for you, assassin. 
We have not spoken in some time, but I am well aware of your accomplishments within the Dark Brotherhood. That is why I have sent for you. I'm afraid there is a situation. The time has come to test both your skill and your loyalty to Sithis. The Black Hand has learned that the Dark Brotherhood has been infiltrated. By whom and for what purpose we do not yet know. What we do know is that there is some link between the traitor and the Chaden Hall Sanctuary. The traitor has tainted that place beyond repair. It was learned that the traitor has been active for quite some time, since before you joined the Brotherhood. That absolves you of any suspicion. Aghast with the revelation of a traitor in our midst, we maintain our composure, having three distinct options to reply. The first, as always, is to say nothing. Listen well, child of Sithis. Or, wait, you can't possibly mean... Oh, but I do. And finally, we can pledge... I will serve you for time immemorial. And that, dear child, is why the Black Hand has chosen you to perform the ancient rite known as purification. Everyone inside the sanctuary must die. You must break one of the tenets you have sworn to uphold. I know this is an unexpected turn of events, but drastic measures must be taken. Ochiva, Vicente Valtieri, Antoinette Marie, Gogran Grobalmag, Talendril, Mirage Dar, and Tainava. All these family members must die. From this point forward, you are no longer bound by the five tenets. Sithis will forgive any murder any theft, so long as you serve the Black Hand. When the rite of purification has been completed, return to me here at Fort Farragut, and we will discuss your future. Now, take these special gifts. They will help you greatly. One is a poisoned apple, the other a unique scroll of summoning. Good luck, Silencer. Still stunned at this revelation, we can only ask a few paltry questions while trying to wrap our head around the dark deed Sithis demands of us and ask, the poisoned apple, is it similar to the ones Mirage Dar sells? The apple has been treated with a most deadly poison. It will likely kill whomever eats it, probably instantly. To use the apple, simply dispose of any other food and put the apple in its place. If someone is inclined to eat and they taste the apple, death. Tell me, why does the scroll have the name Rufio on it? You of course recall Rufio, the feeble old man I sent you to kill when we first met. He was weak in life. But his spirit is quite angry in death. The scroll will allow you to call upon Rufio's angry ghost for assistance. He will appear, unleash his anger upon your foes, and then disperse. And we finally inquire. How can this act be condoned in the eyes of the Night Mother? What of her children? The family... The Dark Brotherhood is an ancient organization. We have survived for millennia. Sometimes, to ensure that survival, drastic measures are required. The purification is one of the most extreme measures we are forced to carry out. Indeed, it has only been carried out twice. Before now, that is. The five tenets are the laws that guide and protect us. But sometimes, even they must be broken to protect the sanctity of our beliefs. With a purification, we cleanse the Dark Brotherhood of mistrust and treachery. 
those who are slain are offered to Sithis as a symbol of fealty. And hopefully, we kill the traitor in the process. Until the purification is complete, no given sanctuary will ever be considered secure. And finally, trying to avoid our task a moment, we ask Lucian about rumors which he famously dismisses. Dear brother, I do not spread rumors. I create them. Our mind begins to swirl at the implications of our act. How purification, when we take a moment to gather our bearings and some supplies for said slaughter. Inside a stone casket, we find the ingredients for a black sacrament gathered up, including human bones, nightshade, and a rare ingredient, a human heart. The alchemical station next to the casket bears another human heart on a plate, and looks as if Lucian is practicing alchemy on some of the sacrificial ingredients, and the fruits of his labor have borne various poisons on the table. Most valuable, however, is the easily missed inventory of this seemingly innocuous barrel against the northeastern wall. Breaking its very hard lock, we find a bounty of poisoned apples, ten in total, stored by the assassin, no doubt for later contracts, and gratefully taken by us for the grisly act to come. Speaking to Lachance again before attempting the contract, he simply presses. Yes, my child? Why has the Chaiten Hall Sanctuary not yet been purified? Everyone based out of that location must die. Only then will the Black Hand be satisfied. Back by Lucian. We then turn to find a hanging rope ladder leading to a hatch above that is surrounded by roots that have entrenched themselves into the ceiling. Climbing the ladder, we emerge inside a hollowed out log nearby the fort and... It should be noted, it is possible to bypass Farragut's defences by simply using said rope ladder at the beginning of the quest to meet Lucian. Heading down the hill, whence we came, a quest updates, reiterating what we already know to be true. I must kill every Dark Brotherhood member in the Chaden Hall Sanctuary. Achiever, Vicente Valtieri, Antoinette Marie, Gogren Gro Bolmog, Talandril, Mirage Da, and Tanava, because I'm now working for the Black Hand, I'm no longer bound by the five tenants and should employ any means necessary to purify the sanctuary. Cautiously entering the gates of Chaden Hall, we make our way back to the sanctuary's secret well entrance in an almost haze of regret. Shockingly, as soon as our feet hit the floor of the sanctuary, all our trepidation evaporates, replaced by the promise of the cold feeling of ecstasy that is Sithis's love for completing the macabre act. And so, our resolve bolstered anew. We begin stalking our prey in the sanctuary one by one, making sure to speak to them first, to garner any clues that may aid us in their disposal. Starting with the most powerful, the vampire Vicente Valtieri, located in the bowels of the sanctuary below. Cautiously, we make our way to Valtieri's private dorm. It should be noted, he nor his fellow family members will have low disposition greetings for this mission, as after murdering Philida, our standing in the sanctuary is all but exceptional. Instead, we awaken a slumbering Vicente on his stone cold slab of a bed to discuss our latest contract saying. Oh, it's my pleasure. Please continue. We've just picked up a contract from Lucian, although it's a rather difficult task. The chance would not have selected you for a contract unless he had the utmost confidence in your abilities. Best not let him down. This is the final time we have to accept Valtieri's dark gift of vampirism, otherwise pressing forward with our task at hand. Spill some blood for me, dear brother. We can, of course, attempt to outright attack Valtieri. However, being a vampire ancient and forgoing our element of surprise, 
The other family members, as well as the vampire, are liable to attack us, <laughs> dispatching us where we stand. <laughs> Why won't you die? Ha! I am honored by your presence. Instead, our best approach is to search around his room for clues as he slumbers, and it's not long before we discover a note from Vicente to Ochiva located in his desk by the double door entrance, which reads, Damn that young fool Antoinetta and her experimental recipes. As if the stench of her cooking weren't bad enough. Last week she made a particularly offensive dish consisting of mandrake, onions, and garlic. Garlic! I've told her repeatedly of the danger this plant poses to me, but she's obviously not heeded my warnings. It is strange this reaction I have to garlic. In all my wanderings, in all my research, I've never encountered another vampire thusly affected. It is true that some popular law holds that all vampires have an inherent weakness to garlic, but this is simply not the case. My situation, as far as I can tell, is unique. If I were to somehow come into contact with garlic, if it in some way came to be on my person, the results could be catastrophic. I would most certainly suffer from a loss of strength and stamina, and fear my resistance to magic would be nearly completely nullified. So please, Ochiva, as mistress of this sanctuary, I beg you to keep Antoinetta on a tighter leash. I love her as a sister, of course, but cannot be held accountable for my actions should she continue to disregard my own personal safety. The tenants clearly state that one family member may not kill another. But I need not remind you there is no restriction against draining Antoinetta of a few pints of precious life blood. Vicente. Following the note's clues to Vicente's admission, we locate in the dorms by Antoinetta's bed a rather pungent chest. Bypassing its lock, we locate a myriad of ingredients, one of which the despised bulbous vegetable. It should be noted, according to the game's files, Vicente has a scripted weakness to garlic, as he'd mentioned. If he's carrying any garlic, he is inflicted with damage strength 100 points, damage endurance 100 points, weakness to normal weapons 100%, and weakness to magic 100%, since garlic is a zero weight item. It can be reverse pickpocketed onto Vicente to dramatically weaken him. Sneaking back into the vampire's room while he still sleeps between 6am and 10am, we surreptitiously slip the garlic in his baggy black trousers and cautiously await its pernicious effect. As we smell his skin beginning to lightly sizzle in his sleep, we leverage his horizontal state and weakness to magic to our advantage, scorching his exposed skin and immolating the proud vampire in the name of the Dreadfather as he exclaims in shock, Die, betrayer! Why, brother? Why? Appeasing Sithis, we can then loot Valtieri's valuables, including a glass longsword, an elven longsword of weakness, and some gold, plus notably, his key to the chest beside his stone slab of a bed, which holds some gold, a potion of chameleon, and for sustenance, the rare ingredient of four bottles of human blood. Of course, with Valtieri being dead, we have forgone his dark gift, but you never know when blood may come in handy. <sighs> we then begin stalking our second victim, the cantankerous cat, Mirage Dar. Remembering his taunts and unwillingness to aid us in our contracts during our brief tenure with the Brotherhood, I have it on good authority that the newest addition to the Brotherhood is an annoying whelp, unworthy of licking my boots. How's that for gossip? However, when we approach him, we notice something different about his demeanor as the Khajiit greets. Ah, there you are. It's good to see you again. No, really, I mean it. Uh, look, I've been thinking and... Well, 
I guess I just want to say I'm sorry for the way I've treated you in the past. I mean, look at you. The things you've accomplished. You've obviously proven yourself a valuable member of this sanctuary. So let's start over, shall we? I know from now on, you and I are going to be great friends. Now, is there something you'd like to buy or sell? We then say, well, I guess bygones are bygones, Mirage. We're so busy anyway with our secret assignment from Lucian. Oh, a secret assignment, you say? Come on, can't you give your old pal Mirage Dar a hint? Who do you have to kill? Anyone I know? <laughs> oh, you may know them. Tell me, as we've never had time to speak yet, heard any rumors of late? The Black Hand is trying to keep it very hush-hush, but one of their own has been assassinated. It would seem the Brotherhood has been infiltrated. Until we meet again, my dear friend. It seems the disturbing rumor has permeated through the sanctuary, and the members' paranoia is rising in a rightful cacophony of anxiety. It's also worth noting, if approaching the Gajit merchant again, he will say. Hey, there's my new pal. <laughs> so what can I do for you? Need some items? Or maybe you're ready to unload something? Whatever you need. What can I interest you in? This is also our final chance to purchase the Khajiit's unique wares, as some of which only he stocks in the game. That's a good deal. When we're done idly shopping. Thank you for your business. We can attack Dar with a frontal assault, but to his credit, he's a formidable spellcaster. Ah, this save me. But more so, prone to becoming invisible and making a break for the other residents for aid, getting us caught in a much unwanted free-for-all. Greetings. So instead, we use a spell of paralysis and pummel his furred flesh into a bloody pulp. Night mother, why, brother? Oh! Ah! Night mother, I beg your mercy. Sometimes I wonder how you survive it all without me being there to watch your back. <laughs> we then loot off his corpse, some potions of sorcery, robes, chest key, and find, inside said chest located in the dorm, a few personal scrolls of Dars, including one of invisibility. <laughs> Our next target being the unofficial sanctuary matron, Ochiva. We head up the stairs to enter her room and see her hatchmate, Tanava, loitering nearby and hatch her own nefarious plan. Speaking first to Ochiva, she checks up on our recent visit to Lucien. You've seen Lucien Lachance then. Good, good. I know whatever task he has for you will be carried out with skill and discretion. Admittedly, Lucien's contract is not something we ever thought we'd have to contend with. Lucien Lachance's word is law. Whatever contract he has given you must be carried out without question. What's the word since we've been gone here in the sanctuary? I, I've heard some talk. This past year, some family members have been found murdered. Could there be an assassin among assassins? Go now, dear family member, and may the Night Mother wrap you in her cold, loving embrace. As tension bubbles over, we leave Ochiva to her raunchy book, The Lusty Argonian Maid, and find her brother, Tanava, in the main hall, who warmly greets. It fills my heart with warmth to see you again, brother. It's good to see you again. I hope your contracts have been giving you much pleasure. Pleasure? You don't know the half of it. Though our latest contract is very secretive. From the Black Hand, no less. So it's a secret contract then, is it? You must be moving up in the world. Congratulations. 
What's been happening with you? There are whispers in the halls of the sanctuary. Some say there is a traitor among us. That the Brotherhood has been compromised. May you walk always in the shadow of Sithis, dear brother. Tanava, probably due to his increased paranoia, finds comfort by his hatchmate in a private room. We follow the Argonians in as to not interrupt the others and remember their callous elimination of their old brother-in-arms, Skartal, as we begin our underhanded gambit. As twisted recompense for his slaughter, we intend them to murder each other. First, by leveraging the Summon Scroll of Rufio, our first contracted kill, as well as casting Mirage Dar's Scroll of Shadow Shape, granting us invisibility so we can watch the mayhem, before finally flinging a cloud of frenzy at our newfound foes. You're pathetic. Ah. Oh. The siblings then begin to tear each other apart, with a niggling Rufio's haunting visage clawing at them indiscriminately. Night, mother, I beg your mercy. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Oh. When the first of the twins falls, being Ochiva, we see that the frenzy is worn off. This is the part where you fall down and bleed to death. And unfortunately, Rufio's efficacy in tandem. He's as useless in death as he was in life. Thus, we notch an arrow from the far side of the room and put down the discombobulated lizard. <gasps> Searching both of the crumpled corpses, we find on Tanava's body his armor, key to his chest, the Argonian heart from the aforementioned Skartal quest, and 484 gold. Turning to his sister, we find her shrouded armor. Raunchy book, The Lusty Argonian Maid, gratefully taken, and a letter to the wood elf Talandril that we pocket for the moment, plus a small amount of gold to boot. We also discover, dropped in the scuffle, Ochiva's glass dagger and her brother's short sword of weakness. Leaving the pair to rot where they lay, we head down to the familiar mess hall slash dorm to find inside Tanava's chest some arrows of illumination boasting 8 fire damage and light 10 foot on strike, as well as a glass bow and skill book, the Black Arrow Volume 2, which increases marksmanship. Speaking of bows, we remember the letter to Talandril and pause, patting our pocket, lifting out Ochiva's letter to the acclaimed Bosma Archer, opening the note from Talandril reads, Most honorable Ochiva, as per your instructions, I will, from this day forward, leave the solitude of sanctuary and maintain the following posts. Loridas and Sundas, I will travel to and remain in the city of Leowen. There, I will spy any and all vessels entering into the Imperial province by sea. Upon my return to the sanctuary, I will report on which ships have sailed the Nibbon northward to the Imperial city. Tirdus, I'm to spend my day here in Chaden Hall in the establishment known as the Chaden Hall Bridge Inn. There I will spy the citizens of this city and report back on anyone I deem a threat to the sanctuary security. Tirdus, I will remain in Chaden Hall, but keep a watchful eye on the sanctuary entrance. At the first sign of suspicious activity, I am to report back to you immediately. My thanks again to you, Ochiva. Your reliance on my gift for subterfuge will serve the Brotherhood well. Of this, I promise. May we walk always in the shadow of Sithis. This allows us two distinct ways to approach the traveling Bosma. The first is out in the open when she is in her streetwear and scouting, but she will simply dismiss. Not here, not in public. We must never speak to each other outside the sanctuary. The risk of detection is too great. Casting a handy spell of frenzy will cause her to drop her ruse, and she'll have to contend with the guards instead of us who, despite being paid off by Count Indaris to look the other way, will be forced to put down the assassin in the street like a dog. You're pathetic. Ah! Ah, What's the matter? Night Getting tired. I beg your mercy. Night Father, 
I beg your mercy. Ah! Die, damn you! Oh. This ends here. Sithis will feast on your soul. Ah! Ah! leaving us to casually loot her corpse at our leisure and leave her disrobed body in the local cemetery for all to see. Otherwise, our second and more secure method is to await Talandral's eventual arrival in the sanctuary. Approaching her while she rests between travel, she will rouse from her slumber and greet. Hello, brother. It's good to see you again. The Night Mother has been smiling upon you, I hope. We then admit... We've been given a secret contract by Lucian, have you heard? Or have you been too busy out and about running errands for a Chiva? Lachance has given you a... a secret assignment? But I've been asking for this chance for so long. Surely he doesn't doubt my abilities. May your arrows always strike true. Leaving the wood elf to fume and go about her business, she shares a final conversation with her lover, Gogrin. Brother, if I may have a word. Yes, sister? Is it true what I've heard about your most recent contract? You were forced to eliminate everyone? Even the non-essentials? Heard about that, did you? <laughs> All right. So things got a bit out of control. Nothing I couldn't handle, though, as you can plainly see. Sometimes I wonder how you survive at all without me being there to watch your back. <laughs> ah, all right then. I guess I should get back to my duties. I should be around later. We'll talk. Walk always in the shadow of Sithis. Hail, my brother! We then further bide our time, keenly watching Talandral's eventual exit through the well grate and prove that we are the superior sniper as we send one of Tanava's deadly bolts into her back. Night Mother, I beg your mercy! Once eliminated, we approach the Bosmus corpse, taking her low-level bow and arrow, other meager possessions including venison for her travels, plus 196 gold and her chest key. Back in the barracks, we find a chest is a bounty of arrows, some damaging health and others producing shock damage in a 10-foot radius. Plus, a ring that imparts 20% resist paralysis that she's in no state to miss. What? I didn't see a thing. Pausing in the Brotherhood's quarters, we spy a sleeping Antoinette Marie, and remembering her love of cooking and chest full of foodstuffs, we then reach in our pocket to admire the poisoned apples Lucian had bequeathed us, and begin gathering up all of the food in the mess hall. After it's all disposed of, including the perishables in Antoinette's personal chest, we then reverse pickpocket the poisoned apple, leaving it on the Breton's person, and begin to wait. The young assassin then stirs, greeting. Yes, dearest brother. Is there something I can help you with? We can then ask, what's been happening in the sanctuary? Don't tell anyone else, but someday I'm going to have Uchiva's position. Just you wait and see. Lucy and Lachance knows real talent when he sees it. Curiously, Antoinette is the only Dark Brotherhood member that doesn't comment on our current contract, and it's possible that she's kept out of the loop intentionally, as she seems to be known around the sanctuary as the gossip spreader, as some members will comment when speaking with each other. What is it? Everyone's talking about your latest exploits. Not only did you eliminate the target, but his six Imperial Legion escorts as well. Most impressive. Word certainly gets around fast, doesn't it? Don't tell me. Antoinette has been running her mouth off again. Anyway, nothing I couldn't handle. And so the waiting game begins. And after a long, arduous day of slashing at a training dummy's crotch, Antoinette takes a seat at the dining table and cheerily consumes her final meal. Is there anything you need? As we watch on in morbid delight. Whoa! 
On the fallen Breton's body, we discover a silver dagger, shrouded armor, and 173 gold. Unfortunately, her key does little for us as we've already pilfered her personal chest's contents. With all other Brotherhood members contended with bar one, we brace ourselves for the fight ahead. Equipping the despised Imperial Legion armor and glass sword, we move to meet the Orc Barbarian Gogren Gro Bolmog in the Southern Training Hall. Gogren, as expected, is swinging his mighty axe at a helpless training dummy. Approaching him, he forebodingly admits, I know what you're thinking. Gogren, he's too big to be sneaky. <laughs> well, you're right. Me, I like to just go in and hack my targets to pieces. Ha! We then say, we've actually taken a contract thanks to Lucian. I don't think we're going to use stealth for this one, Gogren. You're right. Sometimes you need to stand and fight. Lachance gave me a special assignment once. Had to go all the way to Somerset Isle for that one. Killed me about 30 elves. Ah, good times. Happy hunting, my brother. Slicing at the surprised orc's midsection in a horizontal sweep. His orcish armor protects his oblique, enraging the orc. As we block his incoming assault, Why, brother? Why? We're alarmed to realize his great axe is imbued with soul trap, and he intends to savor our soul beyond our death. If we fall to him in battle, our only hope is to hit him in the one spot that is unarmed, and we make a desperate repost to his open maw. Yeah! I'm just up, you pathetic worm. Exhausted, we collect his heavy gear, including the insidious battle axe of deception, which we will use later, to ensnare our enemy's souls, as well as his near full plate mail of orcish armor, Bar Helm which would have saved him this day, and his prized chest key. Inside Gogren's chest is a dagger of dispel, an even lighter elven battle axe, in case the first two on his person were somehow not enough, and a backup pair of orcish gloves. With the eliminations done, we're then left to bask in the love of Sithis, and our journal updates reading, the purification is now complete. Every Dark Brotherhood member based out of the Chadenhall Sanctuary has been killed. I must now report back to Lucien Lachance at Fort Farragut. Exiting the Sanctuary via the well, perhaps for the final time, we don't bother looking back. Arriving at the hill beside Farragut, we then search in the gloom for the hollowed out tree stump and slip into Lucien's private sanctuary unmarred. Upon our return, Lachance greets. The ritual of purification is complete. Well done. Sithis has been appeased, and the time has come to acknowledge and reward your unwavering loyalty. 